Hey guys, welcome back. BDC Care here. It's been a few weeks uh, since we last recorded one of these videos. And so, in our tradition of when we initially started making seasons, uh, we've decided to start a new season. And in the twilight years of Injustice, uh, we've decided to go back to basics. So we have we have rebranded, and it is now once again a Q and A. <laughs> so welcome to season seven, episode one of our pre previously P and Q and C and A and T rechristened Q and A. We're only taking questions. We're only giving answers. That's not true. No tangents. It's going to be twenty minutes again, uh, just like the good old days. Yeah. Um, lies. No, but, so lies. yeah, we've we we've, we've went back. Uh, okay. And most of the time, I think I will no longer mention the podcasts because people already know. Sometimes I will, but I'll do it based off whether or not I feel like it. It's not. I'm. I. I will refuse to submit to the tyranny of the name. Um, so well, I'll mention it now. Uh, if you're on the YouTube uh, video version of this, you can access a podcast version of this by checking out the links in the description, and it does go up on all the major podcasting platforms. But now I no longer am obligated to do it. Uh, in explaining the name, right. So there we go. It's our it's our Q and A. We're fresh. We're lean. We've we've shaved off the extra fat. We fired our editor. Uh, <laughs> you probably didn't know we had one because there's no editing in the video. Uh, turns out he was just taking the money and and leaving with it. But anyways, we're we're gonna we're gonna answer some questions now. Okay, and I just want to point out, and I'm gonna apologize now because I'll put it in the description. But I forgot who commented about this team when we did this last week. And how there was the um, Arkham Knight Batgirl could potentially have a change in her gears. And I was resistant to the idea only because I wanted her to generate enough power. When oh, she yeah. Came and then there was a the threat. I... Okay. So in in, in sort of uh, a tribute to that, I actually did switch out yeah. her second power gen gear for LexCore Gauntlets. It costs us power gen, but the strategy that you're seeing now in this team is a little bit fine-tuned so because she starts off first i'm gonna start a swipe combo with her yeah. either it lands or it doesn't if it doesn't land if i'm fast enough even if they block they can't get a hit back in because then i tag in arkham knight cat woman right away mm -hmm. and if it lands i get a full combo half a bar of power and then i tag in arkham knight cat woman and then the rest of the fight starts as before but now she's got a arkham knight batgirl has got a half bar of power head start so she's pretty much guaranteed to have a full bar when Catwoman is saved from her first knockout. See, I don't remember who that was, but I do remember the phrasing to start their comment, which was something like, not to be a nerd butt, which I think was a very fun way of opening it, because the implication that we would have issues with somebody else being invested in Injustice <laughs> was very funny to me, where I'm like, oh man, this... <laughs> I really appreciate this because it's it's the kind of thing that oh, it seems like I would say, but it, it's Madi Kademi. Yeah, and I hope I got the rhythm right. It says not to be nerd, but surely Lex Core Gauntlets or even Ibistick would be better than Heart of Darkness on Arkham Knight Batgirl. And I guess potentially it is. I, I listen. We definitely have our reasons, and we're always open to the idea of making adjustments. My original argument for setting this team up like I did was because. Arkham Knight Batgirl's value is greatest in having a bar of power where she saves Catwoman. Yeah. And it's more important to have that bar of power than to make sure she does more damage because the Necron Scythe should be enough to boost her damage so that you're going to be wasting a bunch of hits anyways. Mm -hmm. So this is the best of both worlds where we can guarantee her bar of power by the time she tags in and we still get the benefit of the extra crit chance from uh, Lexor Gauntlets. Mm -hmm. Anyways, so okay, I just so, wanted to mention that. So there we go. And yep. getting into our first question, we've, we so we really haven't cut out the fat with our Q&A, huh? We're not living <laughs> up to the name yet. Uh, Freddy G 28 uh, in a reply to somebody else named Bassyfish says, I'm on iOS and there's a glitch where on my second account, I steal the bonus missions from my main account and my third to the second one. So that being said, my second account has like 20 characters, all with Master's Death Cart, and four with Master's Death Cart and Tantu stuck on them from where I log out and go to a different account and then go back to my second. So I can basically go online and play, and all three characters have all the same gears. Pretty cool glitch. So this is interesting, because it comes up every once in a while. And it's a, it's something that I, I don't see other people talking about. But so it's like when you discover a star or a constellation or something, you get the naming rights. Yeah. And so we've called this, I think we've called this account bleeding. Did we're, we discover it? I don't think... I don't know. It's not that we discovered it so much as that we're the first people I think to decide this, to I name it. I think this it. is when somebody else discovers something and then somebody else names it and that's one that's, <laughs> that's just as That's just as good. Well, because nobody is naming properly. You're just describing the... the um, 
What's that? They're, oh my god. Like the I, mechanics? Like the steps? A phenomenon. Okay. They describe the phenomenon of what's happening. And we're explaining it because what's happening is that one account bleeds into another. You see this way more often when you've got uh, two accounts that were one of which was cloned off the other. Yeah. And that's a real danger because it's almost inevitable unless you keep the progress in both exactly the same. However, we've also seen it happen on other accounts where because of the way you switch from one to the other, that you end up having con partial content overwriting the other content, right? Yeah. And I, it seems like the stuff that they store is the stuff that they consider would be important, like information about like credits and like what stuff you have. Right. And not like current game states. Right. So the the danger is that I guess if you get into a good enough routine, you, you can control what stuff overwrites the other. Although the the danger is when we were experimenting with this is that we couldn't do it consistently. Yeah. The second danger is actually what you see described by Freddy G28. So even if it isn't hacking, even if it isn't in intentional uh, with the purpose of cheating, there's a huge risk when you take a, a team online that's got the same gear on more than one character, yeah, you're just asking to get hammered down, like to to have the band hammer. Although the good news is, the more they appear to be asleep at the wheel, it seems like the less likely that manual bans are going to be happening. I don't know. Uh, I mean, that's obviously not uh, an invitation to do it, uh, but I haven't seen any reports of what look like things that have been manual bans for a little while now. I don't think. That's true, too. I guess, you know what? We've been playing for so long. My gut reaction... Like, there's certain things that, that have been programmed into me. I just can't bring myself to do. Yeah. After years of being careful, but I, I think I think the risk is almost certainly lower now. I, oh, don't, yeah, I sure. don't actually know. For sure. It's possible. Right? Because everything that looks like people are getting banned for, it seems like it's still auto-bans right. at this point. But I'm not 100% on that. Right, you never right. know. Yeah, so I... I it'd, it'd be funny to me if their banning department, if their moderating team was the only part that was still active. Like, they hadn't done anything else. Everything so else no was falling progress. into disarray. And they're just like, you know what? I will still kick you off, though, because it looks like you've been cheating. That would actually be kind of... It, and it probably fits with their business model now, because it's not like they're generating much income, right? That's true. So the, the, the kind of... It's just their in-app purchases and their moderation. Yeah, exactly. But not their pro-moderation. They're not getting anybody unbanned. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, remember when uh, Survivor and Android was the Suicide Squad companion gears for, it felt like a year, I want to say? Yeah, for a very long time. Well, there were, like, content updates, though, weren't there? Like, in, there before were, they fixed yes, that. Yeah. Yes, They are actually doing stuff, and they just they just decided that, like, everybody just needed a companion. All right, so, so does Suicide that tell you gear? how they prioritize stuff? Because they were still getting updates. They were still uh, banning some people. Yeah. There were still... Pack rotations, challenge rotations. Fight 62 is still broken. <laughs> Fight 62 is still broken, yeah, absolutely. So the, it's really low on their priority to... They're, they're actually showing us what Improved matters to quality them. of life. Yeah. Yeah, it's weird. Yeah, because it, if it was player experience was the reason they were banning people, they would be doing other things in, in addition to just banning people. Right, right. But it's very obvious that that's not, like, the reason. <laughs> yeah. So there we go. Uh, our next question comes from Harley Quinn, which is cool and a little humbling. It's weird to know that, you know, we've got a bit of a star <laughs> watching our content. I, I don't think it's the Harley Quinn. Do you think this is a Harley Quinn? I think this is a Harley Quinn. You don't Quinn. think this is um, Harleen Quinzel, MD? There's, was well, she a doctor? Or was she... Oh, I she don't was know. like a psychiatrist in like the com in the comics, right? Or I don't know. So the comics. she she was introduced first in the cartoon series. So she was actually she I I believe, and I don't know because I think I was collecting around the time because there was a, an interesting series that came out with Harley Quinn that was drawn by um, Terry Dodson, inked by Rachel Dodson, and Terry Dodson was really known for his what you call good girl art. So it was just like pinup kind of style, right? Oh, okay. And so I remember at the time um, just being aware that she was brought in from outside the comic book con continuity and came from, I think, Batman the Animated Series, but I don't quote me on that. It might I, I'm probably talking out of my butt. Okay, so what she was 
Well, we've got so many skins of Harley Quinn here, anyway. So formed. this could be another skin of Harley Quinn. Oh, that's uh, the it, the YouTube comment skin of Harley. The YouTube Quinn. Harley Quinn YouTube. Okay, there we go. Well, uh, this Harley Quinn uh, says, guys, if you could answer this for me, it would be much appreciated. The Tantu Totem, as far as it being in the 400 and 800 Anth Battle Packs, is it still in those? And other than waiting for it to show up as a weekly multiplayer challenge, that's the only way to get it. Correct. Thank you. So there we go. That's what that's what Harley wants to know. Yeah. All right. So that that actually is a question, along with our theme of going back to basics. All right. So here's something interesting. We definitely got I don't it. know why it's so funny to me that we <laughs> brought the name back. I think it's a fresh start. If I could have, I would have added more letters, but I, I think we we had reached the natural well, end point. I think that part of the problem is that uh, I mean I have so much trouble remembering all the letters. And the yeah, I I did. There was a couple months period where I needed to read it consistently to get it right. It's P and Q and C and A and T. I know now. Oh, you're getting it good now. Well, I've, exactly, but it's gone now. Yeah. Like, uh, like Tears and Rain or whatever the Blade Runner quote is. Oh, that's true. I, all those, all these moments will be lost in time like Tears and Rain, which is a quote from a movie that I don't care for. <laughs> but it was on a t-shirt Listen, I had, so I had, I, to, I had to know it, it. It's one of those movies that is, it, it's aged okay. I mean, I don't know that it's necessarily... If it came out today, I don't know that it would be that great a movie. A lot of it had yeah. to do with what represented time and what the the whole context and how it did a bunch of things that were new. I mean, I, I don't remember any other science fiction movie at the time that portrayed the future that gritty. Yeah. Like that dirty and lived it in. cyberpunk. Yeah, it was... I guess it was. It was early cyberpunk. And, I mean, there was a, a bunch of things. Like, besides the cyberpunk um, aesthetic, it was also written by Philip K. Dick. Yeah. Who was... I don't want to say he was popular, but he was well-regarded in the science fiction mm-hmm. community as an, uh, a capital A author. You know, like someone who really suffered for his art and probably didn't, didn't get as much recognition as he should have before he died. Mm-hmm. Um, especially, I mean, we're talking genre that was... That didn't get a lot of um, respect. I mean, there was a time when Margaret Atwood, you know, Margaret Atwood of um, Oryx and Crake, and I think I forget Handmaid's no, Tale. I had you said Margaret Atwood of what was that Oryx and Crake? So she wrote science fiction because you said that, and I had no context. You said okay. you know Margaret Atwood of, and then something totally right, yeah, okay. unintelligible to me. So she's she's considered one of the greats of Canadian literature. And yeah. she's written science fiction books, but she she was famously known at one point for denying that she wrote science fiction. And it it sort of to me it, it's it represents just how poorly regarded uh, genre fiction is among the you know the cultural elites that study literature lizard people literature. lizard people. <laughs> We're, wait, what the heck were we talking about? All right, hold on. Let me read the question. We're Harley Quinn's question okay. about whether or not Ted Totem comes in the Nth Metal Packs. Okay. Um, can't tell you about the 400 because we didn't have the patience to open 100, 400 Nth Metal Packs. But we did a video on the 800 and, and you know, checking my notes, we opened 100 packs and we were actually at that time more interested in the drop rate of the metal characters, right? Because it was some of mm-hmm. them would be you, there was a chance of getting two, but if we look back in our notes, the entire 100 packs, each one with a gear, we only got five legendary. And when I say legendary, I mean 4.5 star gears. Yeah, uh, we can link that in that video in the description. But the problem is, the cost is 800 nth metal. Mm-hmm. It's going to take you a long time to to save enough to buy one, never mind a hundred. And there are 31 different legendary gears. Mm -hmm. So, all right. So if you want to just do a a count, so, I mean, and some of these are crap. Some of these don't really shouldn't be legendary gears, but they start off as four star gears and they've become five star gears when you uh, fuse them properly. Yeah. So I, I, that's, this is the other thing too. Remember naming conventions? Nobody ever settled a naming convention. I guess we don't really have as much influence as I, I would like. Because what I really want to do is call them something. Because you know, when you name it, uh, you say it's a two star gear or three star gear. Where did it start? Like it, yeah. that that convention ignores all the important information. So when we say four and a half star gear, that to me that was perfect because it tells you where it starts. It starts at four, ends at five. Yeah. Because yeah, exactly. Um, 
so there's a the th three there's four survivor mode gear sets right mm -hmm. so there's fourth world league of assassins lex core suicide squad companion gears and then there's a bunch from multiplayer online there's uh batmobile gauntlets soul taker sword um oh uh before i forget because i'm gonna forget this from the gear locker razzle Glow scimitar which is not from empty but it's in the gear locker it's the only four and a half star gear in the gear locker yeah uh tantu totem master's death cart iba stick claw of horus quake engine riddler's staff scarecrow's ventilator mask the overpowered super necron scythe i'm finally getting that one right yeah uh, mother box no longer scythe <laughs> mother um heart of darkness cloak of destiny uh brandish ninjato astro harness and batman ninja helmet i don't think i'm missing anything so that's 31 legendary gears yeah if you were missing anything there's no way i would be able to fill in that particular gap yeah so if you can if it takes you 100 gears or sorry 100 to, uh and 100 times 8 that's 80,000 nth metal credits mm. to get the 5 and there's 31 even if you didn't duplicate any of them if you wanted to get all 30 of them 31 of them you're looking at holy crap a lot six times that so f i want to say 480,000 nth metal I, my eyes are glazing over. I can't do that particular math. It's too late at night. Yeah, so I guess even if... I mean, what the, the ironic thing is you're asking about uh, a Tantu Totem. And in the 100 packs we opened, we actually got a Tantu Totem. Yeah. So we can confirm that it is in those packs, but it doesn't seem super practical to get it from them. Yeah, I mean, it's... it's and you're going to be disappointed. It's like people who do the Phantom Zone and expect to get a metal character at the end of it from their last crystal. Yeah. And it's a nice to have, but really what you should be looking at Phantom Zone is is for getting Valorium Alloy. Yeah. And it'd be nice bonus if you got a metal character. Same way it'd be nice bonus if you got Tanty Totem or, or something that you actually want in these packs. But it, let's face it, the chance of that is, is relatively low. Mm -hmm. um, and if, if that's your hope, you're going to spend a lot of time playing this game and being frustrated. Not that that's not happening already, but this this is you don't need to, to inflict that on yourself. So there we go. Uh, our next question comes from our newest patron, Brandon C. And he says, uh, We love interruptions. More videos from you guys, the better. Here's my question for the next PQ&A. And, you know, he almost got it right. Very close. <laughs> uh, he got it much more right than if he had tried to replicate the entire uh, title, which is, yeah. you know, uh, good on him. Prescient, perhaps. Uh, what other mobile games do you two play, if any at all? And if Injustice 1 would unfortunately shut down, what would you guys do? Stop making videos, play a new game, etc. Thanks in advance. And so we've answered this question in the past before. Uh, the mobile games that we play doesn't often change for you, but it's constantly shifting oh, for me, so I can actually... I'll speak to that after. It's changed for me recently, too. Oh, has it? Yeah, okay. I'm, um, oh, the uh, Wordscapes, right? Yes. Is that what you're going... Okay. Uh, yeah, and so we can answer the question again. Uh, in terms of mobile games, I don't play a lot of stuff that I keep up with for long term. I think... Probably the only game that I've played other than Injustice on sort of an off and on basis for long term, or I guess maybe there's two here that I'm looking at. There's an arcade style game called Downwell, which is very fun, mm -hmm. uh, which I quite enjoy. And uh, Bloons Tower Defense, especially the newest one, Bloons Tower Defense 6 in the series. I play every once in a while just because there's daily challenges. Oh, I used so to I... play Viking Tower Defense a lot. I like yeah. that. Yeah, so Tower Defense games are inherently appealing to me. And then everything else, I've sort of uh, go in and out of playing different games uh depending on the day uh right now i'm playing a, a rpg match three game called troll patrol which is mm -hmm. um i've been finding fun recently but we don't play a lot of other stuff that's sort of similar to injustice i guess is probably the more relevant question right i think uh other than injustice like the other stuff doesn't necessarily reflect the same tastes and would right. not necessarily be appealing for the same reasons yeah it's sort of, this was sort of like the perfect uh confluence of factors that made us play this same game yeah together it was partly our circumstances where we were at the time we were on vacation yeah and so there wasn't a lot of other electronic distractions and no wi-fi that's true yeah except enough we had enough opportunity to, well you downloaded it before yeah and then you had to like download it at like just like a random place that you got like why like a coffee shop or something <laughs> that you got wi-fi yeah. for a little while and it was like a gig like 1.3 gigs so you just sat around on like the, <laughs> like one megabyte per second wi-fi and we're yeah. like let's get lunch i guess here <laughs> we're eating 
Yeah. Um, and it was not on your phone either. It was on like a chunky tablet, wasn't it? It was on an HP touchpad. I don't know if you remember this. It was so large. I do remember H- it. It was very cheap because HP was get HP very briefly got out of um, physical technology. So who was the guy that was married to Katy Perry? Oh, Russell that's... something. Russell Brand is Russell Brand the comedian? Because there's I know there's a comedian. I don't know. I know there's Russell comedian. Brand and I know there's Russell Howard, and there is those are all the Russells I know. Kurt Russell. <laughs> No, but there's definitely not. It's not the Canadian comedian. It's the British comedian. It's the one that's a little bit dirty. Um, I'm gonna Google Russell Brand and we'll see. So he was the. I I believe I want to say that he was the spokesperson for um, HP when they were pushing this and they're selling the tablets. You do mean Russell Brand, I believe. Okay, yeah, yeah, that's right. So I don't know if I would call him dirty. I don't know if that's fair to Russell. That's his aesthetic, right? So he's got that unshaven, untrimmed beard kind of maybe grunge. I would say. I don't, dirty seems, <laughs> I don't know. You know what What it's from? Dirty I mean, seems like a value judgment. I don't know how accurate it was, uh, his portrayal in um, Forgetting Sarah Marshall, but he played that kind of rock star, oh, and, and Get Him to the Greek, the the rock star that's uh, drug-addled. I mean, he might just be little, typecast, though. Uh, and that he, they might be typecasting him because he's playing two characters. Because you could talk about what Christian Bale looked like in any given performance, that would not be very indicative of uh, his whole aesthetic. I watched that recently, and it it holds up. This is Christopher Nolan stuff, right? Yeah, the Christopher Nolan Batman movies. And in some ways it holds up, and in some ways it really, really doesn't, because the voice has been parodied and mocked since the movie came out to the point where every time he talks in his Batman voice, it just feels a little silly. And my favorite part is, I think he gets shot or something. Something happens to him. He gets injured in some way at one point. And he's making all of his pain noises in the fully (laughs) deep voice. And I'm just like, (laughs) when I was thinking about it, I'm like, okay, that's not his real voice at all. He's hurt. And it's his like unconscious, like vocalizations. He's like, ah, Oh, ow, ow. <laughs> and I'm just like, why would, like, why would you okay. not be like, ah, oh my god, oh, I, I mean, ow, oof. So, <laughs> like, so I want to say that I think those parodies are even like a parody of a parody because the first Batman with Michael Keaton, yeah, they made such a big deal about how he was poorly cast. When, before the movie came out, they said he was the worst guy. He did not look athletic enough. He had not a good enough chin. All this stuff, and he, they used to make fun of him. The, the one scene where he just says, I'm Batman. And I feel like that's that was the original kind of uh, joke about how the Batman voice was just so over the top and not right. Like which, what people expected. Which bat suit had bat nipples? I think the Michael Keaton one did. I know that you know which one did. The Robin one had not only nipples, but it had um, it was the Batman Robin that had Arnold Schwarzenegger. And it also had, like, a cod piece. You know what cod piece is? Yeah. Yeah, it's a whole Shakespeare thing. It was the Batman Forever one with Val Kilmer. Had the had the bat nipples. It was Batman Forever the one that had Robin in it, too? I don't know. But the Batman for was... Yeah, I think so. That looks like a cod piece. Yeah, there you go. And, and nips. Right. <laughs> nips. There we go. That's very unfortunate. They're super prominent. I'm looking at an <laughs> image now. If you have access to Wi-Fi, look up... Uh, Batman bat nipples and uh, click images and it's <laughs> it's a, it's a visual experience. Okay, uh, I'll say that much. Okay, um, <laughs> sorry, uh, we were we were answering Brandon C. Where were we before? Um, well, I guess part of the point was that we've answered it a lot, but it evolves over time. And any time a patron asks us a question, especially a new one, I'm happy to do it because normally what what I feel like when they ask questions like this is that people don't care enough. Mm-hmm really to even look at what we've done but it's probably a fair question because yeah, because we've... you we got a lot of content and you don't you shouldn't need to sift through a ton of stuff to to hear an answer if you have something specific and it's not um it's not curated the same way yeah. i think that like it's, it doesn't have like an overall index it makes it easy mm-hmm. to find stuff yeah and i guess to answer the the question about what we would do uh do you want to talk about mobile games that you've been playing first oh, or okay so it, this is the sort of the exact opposite of the question my answer isn't there's any mobile game playing i actually found myself free of a mobile game 
So there's a game called. So I, I'm big for on quitting games. injustice. For no, not injustice. Yeah, yeah, no, okay. yeah, no. That that would be a weird punchline. Um, so I like word games. Yes, and I think I've been really obvious. I mean, I used to be really good at Boggle to the point where somebody in another province bumped into a friend who happened to also be playing the Boggle and and, and knew of me through by reputation. Yeah, because your reputation preceded you. Yeah. Um, so there's a game called Wordscapes. It's not really Boggle, but it's just a word finding game. You sort you 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 um, mix up letters to try to find different words in it. And I've got not bad instinct in it. So I got hooked on it for a little bit, but I was able to wean myself down to the point where. So this is another interesting thing. They have these daily puzzles. Yeah. And it's a way for every game. Like, Injustice has the daily login bonuses, right? Retention, so, yeah. Yeah, so they want to make sure, even if you're not playing a lot, that you play regularly. So they have a chance to hook you every time. Because the more you are able to get away from stuff, yeah, the easier it is just to stop playing, right? And also because its numbers are better, right? So when they're reporting, right, active users is an important metric, too. Oh, that's true. So it's it's a it's another success metric for the game right for lifestyle games and for free games players and active players are the metrics that are important right 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 no that totally makes sense so the wordscapes what they do is they have this instead of having just a straight scoring puzzle they have this grid the words if you get the word that's marked each time you get uh, i can't remember what it's called but it's like a point or something coins it, maybe yeah if you get enough from the daily puzzle then you can unlock like as a proportion of what's there, your maximum number of coins per day is three. If you don't get it in the right order, if you get the wrong word first, and then you get the... Because each time you get one, another word gets marked, or another part of the grid gets marked. Yeah. And so if you do really well, you get all three. If you do really poorly, you might get one. Mm -hmm. And so the there's four pictures you can collect each month. The first one takes five coins. Second one takes 10. Third one takes 15. Last one takes 25. And what do the pictures do? They do nothing. They're just a collect the and you're collection. Like, do you have like a gallery with access to all the pictures? That exactly, you and they're just animal pictures. I mean, they're cute animals and stuff, but it's not. It's, it's nothing that you couldn't find better on Google, right? And there's no there's no real value to it. It's yeah. really just that if you've got an, a slightly obsessive personality like I do, yeah, you're you're not getting like a Rembrandt reprint or something. <laughs> no, no, it's not. I mean, it's 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 cute animals, and I was holding out that. I've been playing for a year. I thought, okay, do they have enough pictures for more than a year? Because if I can just hold it for a year, then I'm done. Yeah. And then I held it for a year, and then I wasn't done. And then finally, that the whole thing where I had to end up traveling, it put our channel on hiatus because it was just so hard to film something completely separate. Yeah. That's when I broke free of it because I just didn't... I missed a bunch of days. And once I missed a bunch of days, instead of trying to struggle to keep up something that I couldn't anymore, I said, screw that. And mm -hmm. I am finally completely free of that. And so you did it. No more animal pictures. You go to Google for your fix now. I don't even go to Google. Maybe Twitter's better because they do a better job of curating uh, cute cat and dog pi pics. But you were on Twitter before. I'm saying you, you. So you already had your fix, and you just it was right there. It was just a you're yeah, putting I, all this work into it. It was I, the thrill of the chase. It was. It was. Um, so, oh, I yeah. I I mean the part of the problem I guess is that I've let so many other interests slide. Mm -hmm. And the sad thing is now they found the time free of the wordscapes. I'm actually playing Injustice a little bit more. So you see, you see that in the the teams, right? Because we've had a few other teams, and I've had yeah. a lot more fun playing around with them and trying them out and figuring out like the nuance, like like this team in particular, right? What I mentioned about taking Batgirl, and it takes a couple seconds or maybe a fraction of a second longer each time to do that first swipe or at least attempt that first swipe combo at the beginning. But you know, it's that kind of little refinement where you're just playing around so you figure out stuff which always amazes me that there's so many people that are asking online in the forums about well i've got this team how should i gear them how should i who should be go on, go on this team you should just play them mm -hmm. that's the best way to learn because it, it's it's like working out it's time under the bar it's time under tension if you don't do it you don't really get a feel for what the right way to do stuff, how it feels different when he makes... I mean, part of it is being mindful too, right? You could yeah. just play mindlessly and work out mindlessly. And some people maybe need a coach and have somebody tell them exactly what to do. But I think there's no replacement for actually doing stuff and then figuring out what actually works for you. You know what I think is a little funny? What? I think you got Wordscapes in like the one week period that I had Wordscapes and you saw me playing it. 
and then you start playing it. And I just think it's interesting how many of these games that I have had played for a little while, and then you've quietly played for a year <laughs> afterwards. <laughs> I just think, I don't know, there's something about that that's entertaining to me. Um, the and, only other game I, I actually played obsessively was um, Renegade Midnight Star. In Injustice? No, besides Injustice, I'm saying, yeah. besides the ones we've already talked about, it was yeah, Renegade yeah. Midnight Star. Yeah, and that one was not for me. That one was from John Scalzi. Yeah, that was totally my game, and I played that obsessively to the point where there's this one guy that was really super good, and there would be daily challenges too. Yeah. And I finally beat him, and what happened to the game? They stopped supporting it, and it's a totally online game, so if it, you can't play it, if there's no online server, the game dies. Yeah. The game died. It was very sad. You were finally good enough to... I had I had spreadsheets... Mm -hmm. Of the different types of equipment to figure out which pieces of equipment I needed, which ones I could destroy, yeah. and just to to let no one say you're not dedicated. I, uh... You have a lot of spreadsheets for any game that supported them. If Wordscape supported spreadsheets, you probably would have had spreadsheets for that too, wouldn't you? Well, I used to, I actually self published my own dictionary. Southpod's dictionary for Scrabble, yeah. yeah. Um, when or for I was... Boggle, using this also the Scrabble dictionary. Right. So when I was when I was into Boggle, we've mentioned this before. I think. Uh, yeah. yeah. Pro probably not enough that people that there aren't I people we, learning it we've now. We've mentioned it not too long ago, actually. But yeah. Yeah. You. So I I, I get I go whole hog. So you right really now I've got I've got to find something that's really worthy of my love, and then maybe we'll find something. But there's a good chance that whatever I find won't be worthy of anybody else's, and it's not going to make good videos. That's true. Yeah. It, uh, so in terms of other other videos, right? Um, if we'd play other games, stop making videos. Uh, we wouldn't stop making videos entirely. I think it would slow down a lot. I have idea. I always have ideas kicking around in my head for videos that I don't end up making. Yeah. Um, and right now I have a really horrible idea uh, that would involve a GoPro, a face reveal, and like ten hours in a car. Um, and only, I, only ten hours? Is that how long? It's the about ten hours. Okay. Yeah. And I don't want to say any more details about it because I think it's a good idea, and I sort of want to keep it in my back pocket in case it ever happens. Uh, but it would be, and also just like a like a horrible ten hours in a car, like a not enjoyable ten hours spent in a car. <laughs> um, but you know, I I so I always have ideas, uh, and I think just if we weren't doing anything else. I think I would be slightly more motivated to actually make something materialize to actually put up. Well, listen, it's it's, it's a stage of our lives too, right? I mean, I've got a full time job. You're a full time student. Yeah. I, I'm actually. I mean, I'm close enough that. I mean, I'm not there yet, but I'm looking fondly at the prospect of retiring. Yeah, you should quit your job and pursue YouTube full time. <laughs> I think, I think, with this, I think with the success that our channel has, and especially, I mean, we're, we're answering a patron question with that, with the, you know, the, however many dollars a month that we're getting, uh, we, I, you think you buy what, like 10, uh, chicken sandwiches or so for the month, every month, just from our patron money alone, we're rolling it. I don't know. I just pulled that number out of nowhere. Probably not. No, probably like four chicken sandwiches from our patron money. Yeah. Uh, maybe if it's I'm not, part of a deal. Yeah, I'm not, like, doing, the, I'm not a, doing the U.S. Canadian no conversion. No sides. We're not getting any sides. That's it true. would just be the sandwich. We could probably manage that. I, I don't know. And I'm just saying that I think that's uh, that's the cutoff for pursu pursuing this baby full time. <laughs> Make it big. Go it, viral. It, yeah. I think this game has a lot of, there's a lot of room for growth. I think a lot of room for expanding our audience, uh, specifically making this the exact same type of content that we already do. Which leads us perfectly to the next question, actually. Mm. So there we go. <laughs> our next question comes from Apocalypse, and they say they have a timestamp uh, for 8 minutes and 30 seconds. Um, this is from our uh, weekly recap where we're talking about glitches no longer working, right. and specifically the challenge reset glitch no longer working, uh, which is new. And they say, could these glitches no longer working be seen as a sign that devs are getting back into building and fixing injustice, or maybe a sign of cutting ties with services like cloud save and ads to lay the game to rest? Also, I'm seeing Assassin's Gear. Uh, next, uh, and then there's a little bit of a thread, so Kenneth Tong, uh, regular commenter, uh, chimes in and says, with what we've seen from the past year, it's more likely the latter, unfortunately. And then somebody whose name I'm about to mispronounce, and I'm very sorry for it, uh, Pranav uh, Srinivasan. Uh, I don't know. It's S R I N I V A S A N. Uh, says Kenneth Tong. It's too early to say as of now. Injustice gets updates pretty slow, anyways. If we don't see an update by the end of this year, I doubt we will see another one. And I, I if I could actually navigate more efficiently, I'd try to find the original comment and see if there was more. I think there's there were more responses, and I just can't find them right now. Yeah, but those are the those are a couple of responses, and. 
I, I'll tell you what my idea is. What's your that, What's your idea? That um, I think it's more the sign of the death of it because the fact that the challenge reset isn't working is because Google Play updated and the game didn't update with it. Yeah, yeah. Basically, stuff broke. There was a really cool video actually that I saw a while back, which was these people made an automated. A uh, slot machine app creator, mm -hmm. which would just pull stuff from Google, pull random Google queries, or right. random search term, and then pull an image from Google, make the jackpot that image, and then automatically upload it to YouTube, or right. not to YouTube, to the uh, Google Play Store. Right. And mm -hmm. it was totally easy. And each game got like nine installs or something. Like it was crazy small. And then every once in a while, one would hit it slightly bigger. And it was like 10? It was. <laughs> no, <laughs> no, I mean like a couple thousand. Oh, wow. Okay. Um, and so it was really, really crappy. Um, like the game was made awful. There was like no save system. So every time you closed it and opened it, it would like reset your progress. And they made like twenty thousand dollars or something like that from ads, yeah. uh, just because it was constantly pumping out more and it was volume. And they talked about how uh, a couple times they had to go on the back end and change it because there was literally an automated script to make it and upload the game, right? Right. Um, so that there was as little human uh, contact as possible, like not even making up names anymore. I think. Um, and they, they talked about how everyone saw on Google play would update, how it would work and it would break everything and that had to fix it again. Right. And I think this is sort of the same thing where basically they're not putting any work into upkeep. Right. Right. And so Google play changed and they didn't change with it. Right. So it's a sign of lack of attention, not the sign of actual attention where they would actively fix things so that glitches would no longer work. Yeah. We don't, I don't think they were trying to patch this glitch. I just think it happened. Right. Um, Actually, I forgot to mention, I should point out in the game, too, I think I figured out what um, Arkham Knight Batgirl, when she whiffs on her special, and I'm not 100% sure, but now that I'm playing with her a lot more in the on the team, I just want to point out for people who might be interested, I think what's happening is, when she doesn't plant her feet before she starts her special, that's when she whiffs. So if you're, if you've separated yourself and she's coming in, and you try to do your special one... Yeah. She whiffs. So instead of rushing in, block, let them rush at you, and then when you release your block, then your special one will hit. Okay. I just thought, I just want to point that out before we get so to So there we go. Uh, yeah, and I think that's it. We have some Well, I want to... additional conversation topics here to pad out the rest of our time. Well, not so much pad out, but it's, it's definitely a discussion of the time. We're talking about COVID-19. The coronavirus. The coronavirus. For... Because it's top of mind. Yeah. And what's ridiculous to me that it's taken something like this to really point out to people how stupid it is to not have paid sick leave. Mm -hmm. And, I mean, for all the... You know, listen, I get politics is very tribal. It's very partisan. And people, after years of getting screwed by government, think, you know what? I just want to win. I don't even care. You know, like the way some people are willing to, to take a hit because yeah. they want a little bit of justice, right? Mm -hmm. They're willing to sacrifice a little bit and hurt a little bit because they want to um, sort of get back at their oppressors, at the man. Yeah. Um, I, the biggest... Like cutting off your nose to spite your face, but oh, ju yeah. more justified. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So so Kathleen Wynne, we're, let's talk a local government. Ontario government, Kathleen Wynne, introduced legislation that uh, guaranteed put into law two paid sick days, which is almost nothing. And it's definitely wouldn't be enough, but the principle is a good one because what it does is it takes away that incentive for people who are sick and unwell to come into work. And make other people sick. Right. Because you don't want that. But somehow um, the conservative government came in with Robert Ford afterwards, decided, no, it's no good. We're going to revoke that. Wait, isn't it? Yeah, Rob Ford. Sorry. You said... Was it Rob Ford? Isn't it? Doug Ford. Doug oh, Ford. Yeah, you said Robert Ford. I and did. I was like, wait. Okay. It, it took me... I had to process it in my head because I'm like, Robert. Robert oh, is yeah, wrong. Yeah. He was and I'm like, oh. Here. Okay. It's just because I, I... I'm like, oh, I'm just used to hearing Rob. And I'm like, no, wait. Rob Ford is He's, also that's wrong. wrong. <laughs> I was like... <laughs> no, Rob Ford is the, the Ford brother that passed away that was the mayor of Toronto. Doug yeah. Ford is... A, yeah, I totally... I always mess that up. That's okay. Um. So... It, it's it, a, You just... It thoroughly confused me also. Yeah. All right. So... Um, in, in, so, listen, it's tied into the problem. It, 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 well, it plays into the puritanical idea that people want to cheat and be lazy, right? It's and it, it's also part of the problem of exploiting people and paying them... Oh, of like the, removing the sick days. Is what right, right. Yeah, yeah. And, and, and um, paying them a below poverty level wage. So paid sick days 
if you take them, are the equivalent of paying someone a higher salary, right? Because you're yeah. paying them days that they're not working. Yeah. But with the extra headache of maybe having to find someone to cover for the person off, but with minimum wage being what it is, you're already underpaid even if you don't give them sick days. Mm -hmm. So the lack of sick days is another way. Like it's underpaying them even a little bit more. It's like shoving them down mm -hmm. a little bit harder. Yeah. And if you look at compensation as all one thing, right? It's not just salary, but salary and benefits, including sick days. Clearly, like unfettered capitalism, like without any oversight, that's not a good way to manage pandemics. Some would argue it's not a good way to do anything. But... Oh yeah, oh for sure. But is but so then the question is 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 there a better answer than government intervention? Because it costs the government nothing. Yeah, and to... when there's a pandemic, like, you you can't even eat the rich because they're they're bad. They're, they're dirty. tainted meat. They're tainted meat. <laughs> it's so true, um, and I think it 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 doesn't make a lot of sense. There's one sort of side of the political spectrum that mm -hmm. always assumes that people are crappy and they will cheat whenever they can and they will try to take advantage of whatever they can and that's the motivation for not giving people sick days and i think that's not true yeah because that, that is good for everybody and it's equally good the only people it's not an improvement for are people whose employers are already being kind to them right and the people in that position if the if the option was to put this into law and keep the system that they already had or lose all their sick days you know which one they would be preferring right yeah, yeah. they the only people that it doesn't benefit are people who are already better off than that and they should be able to see the value of having them right right so that's my pet peeve for the week so there we go and we're we're at the end here that that timing turned out pretty well we didn't talk a huge amount about coronavirus but i'm sure it'll still be a a relevant issue in the future yeah, no we'll have more opportunities uh so to finish up here uh, shout out to Eliza Michael Katen. Her real middle name is too Slavic for the Canadian school system. She picked this one. I don't. N I don't entirely understand this. I'm assuming her middle name is something that sounds like Michael, and there was some public school issue. There was this one. Oh. There's one dude I knew in school, who um, they swapped his last and first names in um, the school system, like in the in the attendance system, because right. of the way, like it was a cultural thing for the order that they put it in. Right. And then he tried to get it fixed. And they, instead of changing his last name and his first name, they made his real first name in his first name slot and didn't change the last name. So it was first name, first name was his name <laughs> in the system. And it was like over there, like I, I was with him for like in his classes for like most of high school. And I think it was only like the last year, like grade 12 that they actually finally fixed it. So it was, it was reverse order. And then it was first name, first name. And that really confused every supply teacher right. we ever had. But so, yeah, there's probably, probably some comment on, uh, a type on the school system, but I, I honestly couldn't tell you. I don't understand this one either. Okay. Uh, <laughs> and this show has... We been... need her on the show. Do we? Yeah, oh, we'll we we'll see about that. We'll see yeah. if we can't make that happen. Uh, and this shout-out has been brought to you by a steady stream of possum memes, which has a satisfying meter and is fun to say. Steady stream of possum memes. Uh, uh, I can good, get behind that. Good turn of phrase. Uh, and we'd also like to thank, perhaps more importantly, uh, all the people who are directly financially supporting us on Patreon. So yeah. that's a huge thank you to Console Peasant, Ed Woon, both supporting us at the highest last word tier, Mohammed Albshady, Your Message Here tier, Sean Farrell, Daniel Simonson, Aaron Mall, Michael DeVries, and Brandon C., who are supporting us on the credited level, and Chris Wolf and Scarlett NB at the gratitude level. Yeah, so uh, thanks so much for watching, and we'll see you guys next time. Komoda! Komoda.